Hello everybody, Crips here, and as always, thanks for joining me. But today I'm gonna to do something really cool for you. I'll be reviewing Video Studio Pro X. That's right, folks. It's time again. It's the release of Corral Video Studio Pro X8. And as usual, I'm here to do a review. Uh, now, there's a lot to cover in this, so I'll do my level best to make it quick. But like I said, there is a lot to cover in version 8. All right, so on the onset, uh, there is absolutely no different in the interface. If you look from version 5, 6, and 7, it's all the same. The the only thing I noticed in the share tab, if I go in here, if I go to the MPEG uh, option, it now supports the Sony X, FX code, so we're talking 2K and 4K. So that means if you do have one of those powerful cameras, you can easily drop it into Video Studio 8, edit it out, and then also render it out because the Kodak is now supported. So that's pretty cool. If I go into the Edit tab, if I go into the Help menu here, I now can purchase a Blu-ray disc authorization authoring sorry so what does that mean if i have an optical drive if i go straight over into their corral website i can buy a little plug-in and that means i can now create blu-rays within or direct from corral video studio pro x8 so that's kind of cool other than that there's not really any changes in the overall layout so let's have a look at all the little things first and then we'll graduate to all the big features that they've done so the little things they did was in list mode if I go there, they give you a lot more information at your fingertips. Before, right-click properties, have a look at each individual clip. Not anymore. I can now see the frame rate, the video codec, the audio codec, what's the duration of my clip and whatnot. So that's pretty cool. And again, it's all in list mode, so it makes my workflow a lot faster than previously. So let's go into the thumbnail uh, view. And I'm going to grab a photo, drop it on the timeline. And as soon as I did that, it now added a little green check mark. So what that tells me is I'm using this photo somewhere in my project. So if I'm doing a montage with lots of videos or a slideshow with lots of photos, as I'm adding the photos in, it doesn't, uh, I don't have to guess whether I've used this video or I've used this photo before. It tells me like, oh yeah, it's, it's somewhere in my project. So I'm not going to make the mistake of using the same photo twice. So that's... Uh, that saves a lot of embarrassment, right? <laughs> All right, let's keep moving. Screen capture, yep, they even uh, heard your cries about not being able to record uh, the system audio and the voice at the same time. So now you can see the options available. You can do exactly that. So for all those Let's Play video guys out there, uh, let's have a little demo. And don't worry about that because I'm using two capture programs at the same time. So let's pull up a game and let's just have a bit of a play with here. Okay, what we're trying to do is uh, capture the audio. Let's get back out and, and let's stop that game. So as I press stop, it will launch eight again. And let's have a listen. Pull up again and let's just have a bit of a play with here. Okay. So there you go. It did a very good job in capturing the system audio as well as narration. And version eight works really well with Windows 8. So if you split your screen, your tiles, in Windows 8, you can record both tiles at the same time. So that's a pretty cool feature. So I've got plenty more to cover, so let's keep moving. Alpha, they've really gone into alpha mode, and I'll show you what that means. So let's go and grab uh, some text, and I'll just type in grips, like so, and i am put it up here. All right, so it's ready uh, in an alpha mode type of thing here. Now, if I go into, say, double click and I got the attribute tab, I only have the animation option and the filter. And that's, that's still quite a lot to do, but I now can do more. If I right click on here, I now can go convert to animation or convert this frame to PNG. So here it is, as you can see, I've done it before. <laughs> you know, testing it out for you guys. Let's delete that. Let's grab that clip now, because now this is basically a photo or it can be a video. Uh, I can place it anywhere I want. And now because it's, I can place it anywhere I want, if I now double click, look, I can now have the option of mask and chroma key. And you're saying, yeah, well, let's do that. So mask, chroma key, 
apply the overlay. But now look what I can do. Before I had chroma key and uh, what was it, the frame, mask frame. Now I got more, I got four more options. Video mask, gray key, multiply, add key. And I'll show you later on how you can use all of this. But in reality, what it does is I can start blending an overlay clip with the main clip. So I can start blending the word grips into my main clip. I can make it transparent so I can start seeing through the letters. I have a lot more power or a lot more creativity at my fingertips rather than just the plain old text. So that's pretty cool. But don't panic, I will do a tutorial on everything that's new here. So if you're confused, not a problem. Be confused for now and later on I will sort that out. So let's keep moving. Let's get rid of this and uh, let's grab another clip. Uh, let's see. Okay, here's a movie file. So this is uh, quite interesting. So I got my friend here and he's ready to take uh, the bike on the track. So let's say I want to capture this very moment. Now before we could do a snapshot and that was pretty cool. Now they've, they've adjusted that slightly. They call it now uh, freeze frame. So let's click on that. So what freeze frame does, it just gives you the ability to uh, increase the duration of your snapshot. So if you need that, whatever it is, for three or four seconds, and you can narrate it, you can just adjust it here with the uh, duration, three seconds, press OK, and look what happens. It splits it for you and drops it straight into the timeline. So you're moving along, here he is, and then bam. So you can then narrate this, or you can spruce it up, or whatever it is that you need to do. So that's kind of cool, I thought. <laughs> and again, it's all about creativity. And I really, really feel that uh, when I went through this whole new package, that they went more after your, create, your creative side. They've really packed so much in for you to become very creative. All right, so here's something else. It's uh, very new. It's called audio ducking. So, and if you don't know what that is, I'll give you a really brief demo. Uh, let's see, I'm going to grab this, let me just get out of this and move my CTI along. So you can hear the motorbike in the background and now I'm going to do voice narration. So let's do that. Uh, voice over, here we go, start. This is a test, this is a motorbike, he's very loud and he's about to go on the racetrack and hopefully it won't crash because that's my bike and he can't even start it properly. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move this up uh, to, uh, or move it down, sorry, not up. I'm gonna move this down because what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna split the audio here. So I'm gonna split the audio, like so. So now this is on two tracks. So I've got the voiceover on one track. Watch what I'm gonna do. If I now right click, I've got this option here called audio ducking right here. Let's click on that. Uh, sensitivity, yes, but well, I won't worry about that because it's not a tutorial. And I'm going to press OK. Now look what happens. So what it's done for me, it's gone along the timeline, and you can hear the volume of the actual system audio or the actual clip. And then as soon as I start talking, it automatically drops the noise down so you can hear my voice better. So let's have a quick listen to that. This is a test, this is a motorbike, he's very loud, and he's about to go on the racetrack. So you can hear that as soon as I started to speak, the background noise started to drop, and that's pretty cool. So if you don't have to sit there individually and try and add in your, your key notes or your, your nodes and adjust it, it does it everything automatically for you. And if you do that all along the timeline, it does it automatically for you along the whole timeline. You never have to actually do it yourself. So that's a really handy feature to have if you do a lot of voice narration. Let's keep moving. Let's, uh, let's get out of all of this. I don't need this anymore. So what else can it do? Well, like I said, it can do so much more. And let's have a look. Now, when they gave me the info sheet saying this is what's new, they claimed that it had 10 new filters or 10 new plugins. I don't call them filters because technically they are plugins, right? Then there are other applications that you can use. I didn't find 10, I found 20. <laughs> Someone's gonna get in trouble at Corral for giving me the wrong info. All right, let's have a look at the plugins, all right? So FX or filters as some people call it. So first thing they did, uh, ProDad, they've upped the ante and given us a Dorage. Uh, a lot of people already, already have been using a Dorage, so that's cool, but now it becomes stock standard with the ultimate version. And I won't explain what a Dorage does for now. It's a new plugin from ProDad, and again, I will do a tutorial later on, but there's so much to cover, let's keep moving. So what else? 
the new blue and let's go into new blue four so here already we have a whole bunch of new filters that we can use and again each and one of these they're very powerful i i like a few of these filters already like magnify so let's have a look at what magnify does and it's pretty cool let's just grab a clip fx magnify now if you are doing a lot of screen capture and you want to zoom in on things you there's you know there's ways i do it with the crop filter but not anymore i can just use my magnify why am I in my uh, audio mode? So let's go into attribute. And as you can see here, I can now move this around and I can magnify it, I can change the shape. I can do a lot of things with this. So if I'm doing something like a tutorial using screen capture, I can use this little plugin to really help me with my tutorials or whatever it is that I'm doing. So that's pretty cool. So let's get out of that and let's keep moving. What else? Let's have a look. New Blue Essential 2, and again, we've got a whole plethora of new plugins again. What is that, 9 or 10 over here? So uh, before we just had the picture-in-picture, -picture, but as you can see, they've given us more. Rack Focus, kind of core. Cool. It gives you, you can do uh, depth of field with this one. And Chroma Key, and Chroma Key is kind of cool. I'll really, I'll do a real quick view on this one so you can see what it is. Let's grab a uh, green screen effect. And let's grab that chroma key. So if you've ever done any form of After Effects work, you have a thing there called matte. So what that means is uh, you can have a look at chroma key in a different view. So let's go into the show mask. So basically chroma key works on this. Whatever is white disappears, whatever black stays. So if I started to tweak it, because as you can see, I have a lot of gray still in the, in the white. So if I start to tweak it and become, oh, probably the other way, yeah. All right, so there you go. So like I said, whatever is black stays, whatever white disappears. So it's, I'm gonna have a really nice, clean background. So if I see a little bit of like here, gray speckles, that means I'm gonna start seeing a really weird effect at the bottom. It also gives me the ability to shrink and soften. So if sometimes you see this little green tinge around you, you can shrink that so that disappears. And also when you do, do a green screen pull, you're very sharp on the edges. We can soften the edge and so it blends in with the background so it looks more natural. So this plugin helps you with your chroma key or your you know, doing your green screen work. So let's get back out of that and let's get moving. Let's just get rid of this. But uh, without a plugin, it also offers you a little bit of help as well. So let's go back into the green screen, mask and chroma key, and then just mask that out like so. Okay, so you also now you can play with this option here, your, uh, your gamma and your tolerance. So I can start really pushing, if, if I have poor lighting, which is a good example, I can use this to adjust the lighting and then eventually, um, well eventually, once I everything perfect, then I can add my background and, and everything look uh, really clean. So it basically uh, helps you if you made uh, a green screen and the lighting isn't that great. So it has a lot of help it gives you a lot of help to make better green screens. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on. Auto music got a bit of an upgrade, so let's take a quick look at that. So as you can see now, the layout is different. Over here, you've got category. From there, you can choose your song, and then from here, you can choose your version. So that's I think that's a much better way of doing it. Uh, they've given you, obviously, extra songs and triple scoop music. They also gave us another 17 soundtracks to work with. So that's pretty neat. Motion tracking, we'll have a quick look at motion tracking. Let's go in there. Uh, let's grab a video file, track motion. And what they've done here is just give you a little bit more flexibility or control as how you want to apply mosaic to cover either a face or lettering. So as you can see now, you have a couple more options on how you want to do it, a rectangle or a circle, and then change the size. So that's going to help a few people out who are always stuck with just one shape. All right, let's, uh, let's look at one more thing, and I think then we can wrap it up. So, um, like I said, the overlay option, we can blend basically the overlay to the main track. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's grab, uh, I don't know, anything. It really doesn't matter what it is. Uh, that'll do. So here we are. So I'm, I'm going to try and remove this white background. So how am I going to do that? Well, very simple, mask and chroma key. Now, white's not easy to do because uh, normally you use green or blue because it's the furthest tone from away from your skin. So you can imagine doing a chroma key this way. It's not going to work, right? But it does with uh, Video Studio 8. So you can see I'm yellowish. So I'm going to change this mode into the multiply. Okay, and now I'm going to start tweaking with, say, the gamma. And as you can see, I'm starting to 
stand out a bit more. Now, you're not gonna get this 100% because what we're doing, we're blending. So you're blending the background or the overlay with the background layer. But as you can see, I'm still creating a pretty cool effect. And I'm sure if I have a bit of a play with this and tweak it more and more, I can do it. But you can see how now with this ability here and with the chroma key, you can start blending your work together and you become so much more creative in whatever it is that you're trying to create. So there you go, my friends. I'm probably sure or know I have missed out a few things, but I will cover them later on in future tutorials. And everything you see here today that's new, again, I will do tutorials. And as always, thanks for watching.